Hello, for today's video lecture we're going to be dealing with fixed axis rotation in rigid bodies. So rigid body kinematics, uh, we're starting in this new section. So, so far we've been talking about particles where we are only concerned with the location, velocity, and acceleration of that particle. Uh, so if we are now going to start talking about rigid bodies, uh, we're going to be concerned with orientation, angular velocity, and angular acceleration of the object as well. So these are going to add to what we deal with with particles. Uh, so an example of this, uh, we might treat the baseball in this picture like a particle. Uh, we're worried about its velocity, we're worried about its acceleration, uh, its position, uh, but the kind of orientation of the baseball doesn't really matter. Uh, the baseball bat, on the other hand, uh, the angular acceleration, the angular velocity of that baseball bat are going to be very important to the problem. Uh, so that one we would treat like a rigid body, uh, almost certainly. All right, so we're going to start with fixed axis rotation. Uh, this is where the body is rotating about some fixed axis, uh, and the axis is not moving. So this will allow us to examine the orientation, angular velocity, and acceleration terms in isolation uh, since there's no translational motion to worry about. All right, so uh, examples of this are also pretty common. So the flywheel uh, that we have here on this antique motor uh, is going to be rotating about that central axis. Uh, also something like uh, a CT scan, there's a gantry inside of that structure there. Uh, it's going to be rotating very fast uh, about a fixed axis. So there's no physical axis in the center, uh, but there is a center of rotation there. Uh, so both of these count as fixed axis rotation, uh, where we can deal with these terms without worrying about translation. All right, so to examine the rotation of the body, we can use the formula shown below. So first of all, uh, theta is going to be the orientation. And so in 2D, it's going to be theta of t. Uh, similarly, how we had the x uh, for single uh, dimensional motion uh, here. And a lot of this is going to uh, mimic the one-dimensional motion equations that we've seen before. Uh, so if we take the derivative of the angle with respect to time, uh, that's going to be our angular velocity. So we can use the Greek letter omega uh, to in indicate angular velocity, uh, or also we could talk about it as theta dot. Uh, so we might use theta dot more often when we have multiple angles that are going to be changing over time. Uh, finally, we take the derivative of the angular velocity over time, or the derivative of the derivative of the angle over time, uh, and we wind up with the angular acceleration, alpha, uh, is what we're going to use for this. So uh, like we did with the kind of one-dimensional motion, uh, we take the derivative to move from the angle theta to the angular velocity, omega, to the angular acceleration, alpha or we integrate to go backwards. So if we start with alpha, we take the integral, we wind up with the angular velocity, take the integral again to wind up with the uh, angle at any one time. All right, so also since these are mirroring our one dimensional equations, uh, if we have a constant angular acceleration, we can use the following formulas. So omega of t would be, uh, at any one time, would be alpha times the time plus the initial angular velocity uh, the angle at any given time is going to be alpha over t, or alpha over 2 times t squared plus initial angular velocity times time plus the initial position. Uh, and then put those two things together, uh, the angular velocity at any given time is going to be the initial angular velocity squared plus 2 times alpha times the change uh, of the current position minus the initial uh, or sorry, current orientation minus initial orientation theta there. Uh, so this is just a direct, we've taken our, um, basically our positions, so this is the equivalent of x, this is the equivalent of velocity, this is the equivalent of uh, uh, acceleration there. All right, so all of those, we can use those for our fixed axis rotation problems. Uh, and when we talk about direction, so with translation, we had x and y when we had 2D. Uh, and so i and j are the unit vectors in those directions. Uh, in rotation for 2D, we talk about the rotation about the axis that we're looking at. So in 2D, that rotation is always going to be about the z-axis, uh, which we use k, the k unit vector, to indicate the z direction. Um, and so... This is very similar to the way the moments work. Uh, the axis of rotation, along with the right-hand rule, 
uh, indicates the direction of that rotation vector. All right, so next up, let's talk about motion of a point on a fixed axis. Uh, so if we look at motion about a fixed axis, the material on the axis of rotation itself is not moving, uh, but all the points not on the axis of rotation are moving. Uh, and to discuss the motion of a point on a rotating body, we're going to look at polar coordinate systems uh, and borrow some of the analysis we've done earlier. Uh, so here we've got a record player. That record is turning. Uh, the center, so the record as a whole uh, is not really moving. Uh, if we look down on it, it's going to be locating at the same point. Uh, and the center point is not moving at all. The axis is not moving. Uh, but if we look at any point on the record, it's going to have its own velocity. It's going to have its own acceleration uh, because of this rotation. All right, so <clears throat> looking back at polar coordinates, this is what we had for the polar coordinate systems. Uh, we had uh, r. So the position is r in the ur direction. The velocity is r dot ur plus r theta dot u theta. Uh, in acceleration, we have the formula all the way down the bottom. All right, so for rigid bodies, uh, the point on the body maintains a steady distance uh, to the axis of rotation. So the distance between O and P is not changing. So this is our, you know, some point out on the record and the central, central point. R is not changing, which means that R dot and R double dot are zero. So if we plug R dot is equal to zero and R double dot is equal to zero into the formulas on the previous page, this is what we would wind up with. Uh, so the uh, position doesn't change. We're not worried about that too much. Uh, velocity of any point is going to be r theta dot in the u theta direction or r omega in the u theta direction. So it's going to be whatever this distance is from o to p uh, times our current angular velocity. Uh, and the direction of travel is going to be the u theta direction where u r is going from o to p. u theta is 90 degrees counterclockwise from that. Uh, so acceleration, when we lose the r dot and r double dot terms, uh, we're going to have two forms of acceleration. So we're going to have the centrifugal acceleration, so negative r omega squared u r. And so that's going to depend on the angular velocity and, again, the distance from the axis of rotation to our point. And then in the theta direction, I'm going to have r times the angular acceleration. All right, so these two terms both come into play for acceleration. All right, and building on this even further, we have rolling without slipping. So though it isn't a fixed axis rotation problem, uh, we can extrapolate just a little bit further to discuss uh, the instance of a wheel kind of rolling along a surface. Uh, so if you imagine fixed axis rotation, so imagine our car, we lift up the car and we press on the gas and the wheels are just spinning in the air. Uh, the velocity of point P would be the following, uh, r omega in the u theta direction. So I put the axes on there. P is the uh, a point on the edge of the wheel. In this case, it's going to be the point that's going to be in contact with the ground when we put this down. Um, so the acceleration would be uh, the following. Uh, so I just pulled that directly from the slides above. And so this is all without the wheels touching the ground. Uh, now, if we move on, so if point Point P isn't moving though, so if we put our car down and now we're worried about the, the wheel rolling along the ground. So point P isn't moving uh, because in rolling without slipping, there's no relative motion there. Uh, so if point P isn't moving, uh, instead the central axis is moving. And it's going to be equal, moving in the equal and opposite direction. So the velocity of the center is just the opposite of what the velocity of point P would have been. So it's going to be negative r omega in the u theta direction. So it's going to be moving the opposite of this direction here uh, with a positive rotation, which is what we've got shown here. Uh, for acceleration, so point P is actually accelerating in the r direction, but it's not accelerating in the theta direction. Uh, so the acceleration of my wheel would be negative r alpha in the u theta, dire uh, u theta direction that we have shown. So that's going to be something, kind of a little extension of fixed axis rotation for a wheel that is rolling without slipping. All right, that's all we have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.